Hello, my name is Andrew Sheets. My name is Corwin Temple. And my name is Jared Craig. And this is our group project, Freeze Frame. Our game is set in a post-apocalyptic Arctic wasteland where you're a lone wanderer traveling via the use of a newly discovered prototype grappling gun, which the player uses to progress through the game. As a lead gameplay designer, I created the grappling hook mechanic, wolf AI, damage and death system, along with the hook gun model in, it, in its uh, animations. These all have been included to promote gameplay interactivity and to improve the overall gameplay experience. In total, the game has a main menu with two playable levels, which highlight different ways in which the grappling hook can be used to enhance the mobility of the player. Different sections of each level encourage the player to use the grappling hook in creative and different ways, allowing for a more varied gameplay experience. The grappling hook itself has three modes in which the player can utilize. The first mode has the player manually place two grappling hooks, which is less accurate than one hook but gives the player the most launching power. The second is a single grappling hook for making simple and quick decisions. And the third, which allows the player to lock the cable in place, allowing them to pivot around the hook point. The main cornerstone of the game was of course the grappling hook, and as a result the main problem from a gameplay aspect was making it feel and function as smooth as possible in order for the game to work as intended. I pulled reference from multiple other games to develop the design of the hook and added my own spins in the form of the different modes in order to make the mechanic more central to the gameplay. The biggest problem here was making the different modes feel unique and usable, as well as making uh, launch direction and power based on player chosen hook points in the world. A large portion of this was accomplished by doing some math to get the halfway between two hook points and getting the direction vector from the player to that middle point. Overall, the feel ended up being accomplished by designing the modes to be uh, more useful in specific situations, but still allowing the player general freedom to choose which one they wanted to use um, in any given situation. Another important aspect of the gameplay was the enemy wolves. These wolves hunt and attack the player on the ground and are used as incentives for the player to stay midair using the grappling hook. In order to effectively establish a design for the wolf AI, I ended up doing research on multiple tutorials to find out how nav meshes, the behavior tree in uh, Unreal Engine 5, and uh, the query filter plugin for UE5 works. In the end, I created the wolves with a query filter based patrol system along with various different behaviors including a leader wolf behavior and a howl alert system behavior, to name a few. An unexpected issue I found while making these wolves function in the world was making the wolves move correctly, and by that I mean the wolf model and animations that I got from Unreal Engine 5 Marketplace, um, they had no animation blueprint, and as a result they wouldn't move correctly, even if I had a, a good AI setup. So I ended up having to create a completely new animation blueprint from scratch, which involved making and tweaking a blend space for root motion movement along with a new state machine. Additional systems and assets I worked on include the health, damage, and death system, in which the AI wolves, including the player, have a health pool, which can be damaged individually. Uh, when either runs out of health points, their respective death state will be played. In the case of the wolves, this would be a ragdoll, and in the case of the player, it would be resetting the level. I also ended up having to model, rig, animate, and import a new hook gun model, um, along with texturing and modeling the hook itself, and uh, along with its cable. Finally, I helped with the UI that uh, interacted with my health and grapple system. Hello, my name is Corwin Temple, and for this project I was in charge of level design and optimization. So I initially started this project with creating the landscape environment because, well, it's a bit of a problem if you have a game but no level to play it in. So I put in a landscape environment and installed in the landmass and water systems plugins, which I both used to create the different aspects of each level. So after I had finished the initial setup of the landscape environment and painted them over, added in the land masses and such, I moved on to getting foliage for the scene to actually make a forest and give it life. And this is where I ran into the first big problem that I had because the foliage, which I got off of Megascan for the grass and miscellaneous bits on the ground, were fine, but the trees I got off the Unreal Marketplace were very frame intensive. The moment I put them in, there was a massive drop in frame rate, and so I had to fix that. And this led me down a pretty deep rabbit hole into LODs and textures and culling distances. And after I had learned all of that and applied them to the trees and the rest of the foliage as well, to just increase performance universally, I just sort of took over optimization for the project as a whole, considering I had already researched most of it. So after I had finished optimizing the trees and foliage, I moved on to creating 
two different particle systems in Niagara for use within our project. The first one being a snow system, which follows the player around to help increase the atmosphere, and the second one being a localized area of volumetric fog, which we ended up using in the lake scene. And so after those, I end up setting up the universal exponential height fog and adjusted the lighting to be more in line with what you would see in such environments in the real world. Another change I ended up having to put onto the trees and even the boats in the lake scene was a special physical material that I created, which was used by Jared and Andrew to have the cursor for the grapple gun to change when over a specific object that you could grapple onto for better player visibility. After that process was complete, I moved on to creating our ice material that is used in the lake level for the frozen over lake. And that was also quite a problem that I ran into because it was quite difficult to create an ice texture. The combination of the opacity and the base color and the normals all blending together and yet making sure one didn't overpower the other to make sure it still looked good but also had that ice feel to it was quite tricky and took a lot of research and some trial and error but eventually I did come out with the result that's in the level. Once I had gotten the ice texture looking nice and proper I moved on to the friction system to be used in tandem with it which once the player goes out far enough into the ice lake, I set up a code system using Unreal's blueprint that changes the character's friction and also the rate at which they break naturally to create a much slipperier, unstable surface akin to ice platformer levels, which allows much greater speed and freedom with the grapple system in this environment to more easily avoid the large amount of wolves within it. So overall, my role was creating the environment and making sure that the character would be able to properly interact with it, along with a lot of behind-the-scenes work to make sure that it ran smoothly. And I honestly quite enjoyed the process, <laughs> being able to create a world from nothing and the way I thought it would be imagined was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it quite a bit, and though it did certainly have its challenges, Optimization wasn't honestly too incredibly bad either. It was fun to sort of find the magic trick that would give me smoother and smoother gameplay until eventually we got the result that we have. Hi, I'm Jared Craig, and I decided to take over the part of the UI because I think the UI is extremely important in any game because it creates the polish and game feel and it is the first thing the player sees and the last thing they should be thinking about. And the UI's job is to direct and inform the player while maintaining the game feel and not intruding on the gameplay. The best place to start when talking about the UI is the main menu, because that's where the player starts. And I styled the main menu with an animated video in the back of an Arctic environment to give the player an expectation of what they're about to go into. And I created the title logo with a big, freezy font to set the game's atmosphere. In this game demo we made, which is very fast paced and hectic, I found that it was really important when creating the HUD to make sure that it's dynamic and updates with the player so that the player never has to slow down their gameplay to know what's happening. And you can see I did this by creating an HP bar down in the bottom left that shows them how much health there is a compass with an objective icon up top that moves with the player, an objective text display on the right. When talking about the compass system up on the top, I created this system because I felt it was crucial that the player always knows exactly where they need to go. And that compass system that always shows their objective and their direction is perfect for that. And in the same vein, instead of just showing them where to go, the objective system was created so that they know why they need to go there, which updates every single time they uh, reach their objective. After I had finished creating the HUD, I started looking towards other places in the game that could be improved by UI or UX, and one immediate problem that I found was our time slow effect. 
it kind of didn't feel like you were slowing time besides the fact that you kind of fell slower. So I added a chromatic aberration whenever you uh, slow time so that it gives you the feel that time is slowed and the effect is really cool looking and it feels really cool to play with. Another problem that I found in the gameplay was that the player was having a really tough time finding out exactly what they can grapple to. So in order to remedy that, I implemented a dynamic crosshair system that sends out a line trace at all times to check to see if the crosshair is aimed at something with a special physics material named is grappleable. And if the player is looking at something they can grapple to, it switches the crosshair to a more friendly green indicator that they can grapple there, allowing the player to make quick split second decisions and know exactly all the information they need to to have a fun time. One more problem that I found was that the player could not easily tell when they had been damaged when it was just the HP bar lowering a little bit in the bottom left hand corner. So in order to remedy this and give the player a more distinct feel of being damaged, I added a damage indication system so that whenever you are hit it pops us this little transparent red frame around the camera so that they can tell immediately whether or not they're looking at the HP bar that they have been damaged. Also, in addition to all of the UI and UX, as well as the blueprints for the navigation system, I also textured the fun model that Andrew made for our grappling gun, which was actually a really good time.